What's up everyone, Dr. Tom Walters from Rehab Science back in this week. This time I want to talk about ankle sprains. Ankle sprains are one of the most common orthopedic injuries and uh, there's one type of ankle sprain that's the most common, it's called an inversion sprain and basically involves situations where it uh, commonly occurs in basketball, someone lands on someone else's foot, maybe it's a runner, it steps in a pothole, but the foot goes through inversion, so the ankle inverts like this and the ankle turns and really bad sprains the ligaments here on the outside of the ankle are stretched and maybe even torn. So what we want to do is I'm going to show some drills in today's post that will help to reestablish control in that ankle and build strength so you're less likely to have sprains again in the future. Okay, so for this first drill we're going to look at mobility. This is the only one that looks at mobility and specifically a movement called dorsiflexion which is when the shin comes forward and the ankle bends this way so it's the opposite of pointing your foot. This motion is commonly lost or becomes limited after ankle sprains so what you can do is find a wall or a post or something like this and you're gonna see you're gonna kinda measure yourself how far can you get your toes away from the wall and still touch your knee without your heel lifting. So that will give you a sense of your dorsiflexion mobility and what you want to do is see again how far away can you go and compare the injured side to the non-injured side. Oftentimes the non-injured side can go quite a bit farther away from the wall and you'll find that the injured side can only maybe do half of that. So what we're going to do is find that spot that you can get to without lifting your heel and then you're going to go right down to that area and then you're going to kind of hold. You can even kind of get down there and kind of oscillate and this will help to self-mobilize the joint and improve dorsiflexion mobility. So for the next drill, this is going to be our first strengthening exercise and it's very low load, it's just with an elastic band. So you want to put the band on, tie a loop in it, and pull it sort of towards the midline of your body and up towards the opposite shoulder. This exercise is going to strengthen the two peroneal muscles that run down the lateral side of the leg and attach down on the ankle. They are the dynamic protectors of those ankle ligaments that are injured in an ankle sprain. So we want to strengthen those as they'll uh, continue to protect the ankle. So what you're going to do is let your ankle come into that inversion posi position slowly. Again, that's the position where the sprain occurs. So you have to be gentle with this, but then you're going to use those muscles to pull the ankle out into eversion. That's what the peroneals do. They evert the ankle. And then again, slowly let the ankle move in. Control that movement. Don't let the band snap your ankle in. And then pull back out again into ankle eversion. I want you to shoot for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions of this movement. You can go even higher if you feel no fatigue at that point. You can go up to 20, 25 repetitions. So just in and out like that, working the ankle everters. For the third exercise, we're going to start introducing a little more resistance. So we're going to use body weight. This is going to be a calf raise, and most people have done calf raises before, but what I really want you to think about is that when you do your calf raise that you really think about as you come up on your toes that you come up over the ball of your big toe. Thinking about that movement will again cause the peroneals, those muscles we just worked in the last exercise, it will cause them to be more heavily recruited in a more functional exercise like this calf raise. So hold on to something with your arm so you're not losing your balance and then you're going to stand on the injured leg and again, slowly come up into a calf raise as high as you can. Think about putting your weight over the ball of that big toe and then back down slowly. And then again, up through full range. You want to try and shoot for three sets of this and 20 to 25 repetitions. Okay, so for the fourth exercise, we're going to look more at proprioceptive control, which is the body's sort of position sense. So it's your nervous system knowing where you're at in space, which is really important for not injuring your ankle again in the future. So for this one, I don't have tape marks on the ground, but you can do this if you need it. You're going to stand on the injured ankle and you're going to reach out and squat for reaching for the positions of the clock. So these are just called clock reaches. So you're going to reach out to the different positions of the clock, go out as far as you can, reach so it, it requires you to balance but also requires some leg strength, so I'll do that side of the clock and then reach over to the other side. I'm going to reach over to all the positions of the clock and work on that balance, try not to lose your balance, and reach out to each position. So a little bit of strength 
and control all at the same time. So for the last exercise, this is going to be more of a general lower extremity strengthening exercise. So we're going to look at strengthening the entire kinetic chain as we realize the ankle is just one joint in that whole chain. So we want to work on the hip and the knee too. So the, one of the best exercises you can do is a single leg squat. So you're going to stand on that injured ankle and sit back or you're going to a chair and perform that squat as deep as you can, far down as, com as you can comfortably go. And just trying to keep your ankle and knee in neutral, not letting things kind of dive in or move around too much. For this one, you want to shoot for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions.